and welcome to Gig Backdrops, how to get them right the first time. This is a guide for Aussie bands by me, Steve the Banner Guy. Why do you need a gig backdrop for your band? Well, the reasons I hear the most often is so you can connect more closely with your crowd, so you can look more professional, and so you can be taken more seriously as a band. What you'll learn on this video today is what is the best fabric to use for your backdrop and why. You'll find out what fabric choices there are for you, what are the best ways to display your backdrop, there's some backdrop design cues including things on colour and fonts, and how to get the most mileage from your backdrop. There's also information on backdrop alternatives and additions you can use. There's also a bit on technical stuff about your artwork and turning your ideas into reality. And after you've done that, you'll find out where you can go from there. So let's get into it. Traditionally, PVC vinyl was the fabric of choice for a backdrop. But no more. Times have changed. The main trouble with vinyl is that you can't fold it without creasing it. And these creases just never come out. And they make your backdrop look terrible. In fact, they make it look like <laughs> These things make vinyl backdrops a real pain to tour with and to store, unless you roll them. My largest regular size backdrop is 6 by 3 metres in size. So where do you put a 3 metre roll of vinyl when you're on the road? In my experience, the best choice for a band backdrop is a woven fabric. Woven fabrics can be folded without a problem, and they won't crease like vinyl does. This makes them easy on tour and easy to store without doing damage. A 4 by 2 metre woven backdrop will fold up in size to something a bit smaller than a pillow. Woven fabrics have a matte finish. They look better under spotlights. The colours on woven fabrics are very vivid and they provide a near photo quality finish. Woven backdrops are also extremely tough. You can even hand wash them if they get dirty. My woven fabric come in two main flavours. I call these Super Tough and Blockout. Super Tough is a great fabric. It's strong, it's easy to use and it's very versatile. In fact, it's the most durable woven fabric in my inventory. It's great under lights, it supports full colour graphics, including photos, and Super Tough is so strong, I actually use it these days in place of vinyl for all my outdoor banner work. It really is tough. Blockout, by alternative, is a luxurious fabric. It's also incredibly durable, and its major benefit is that it's opaque. Light won't bleed through it, and they're a great choice for photorealistic graphics. It works well outdoors too because of the opacity. Its tight weave gives block out its opacity and it's a great choice for big sizes. When it comes to displaying your backdrop on stage there are three main ways. The most popular are metal eyelets, closely followed by pole loops and after that a later innovation are velcro loops. As I said metal eyelets are my most popular choice mainly because of their versatility. The eyelets I use are metal and they're nickel plated. This makes them rust resistant. They're doubly reinforced and they're stitched into the fabric of your backdrop. One thing I really like about these eyelets is they're a black chrome in colour. It makes them really look great on stage. And I can use as many or as few eyelets in your backdrop as you want. Eyelets are the simple answer to display. And their black chrome colour is perfect for on stage work too. Pole loops are often the best choice for big backdrops. It's essentially a full width loop that runs across the top of your backdrop so it hangs more evenly. This can be made to a custom size so it fits your needs and I can also make pole loops on the bottom or the sides. It's no extra charge. Pole loops essentially work like a curtain loop and they work best with a banner stand. Velcro loops are probably the latest innovation. Not rocket science I know but they are very handy. Velcro gives you the best of both worlds. They can be used almost anywhere and they're handy if you play all different types of venues. They can also be used in conjunction with eyelets. This makes them very versatile. Different display facilities at different venues can make Velcro loops very handy. That said, you can use any of these display options in any configuration you like. The most common ones are pole loops and eyelets. This is no problem or Velcro loops with eyelets too, that's easy. 
Having a combination of display configurations is no extra charge. Now let's talk a little about the design considerations for your backdrop. The chances are you've already got a really good idea of what you'd like your backdrop to look like. And your design is of course up to you. There are a couple of things that you might want to take into consideration. Things like colours. Your backdrop will be seen under various coloured spots. And these coloured spots can wash out or mute the colours on your design. The easiest way to get around this is you have to make sure your colours are of a high contrast to one another. This is not rocket science. It's just a matter of making sure there is a good contrast between the foreground and background colours of your design. Another very important thing to consider is the font or typeface that you use on your design. It can be very tempting to use a typeface that's edgy and artistic to complement the theme and spirit of your band. I understand that. You want to make sure, though, that it's not so out there that your audience will have trouble reading it. That partially defeats the purpose of having your backdrop. If you do have a hard-to-read font as part of your logo, you might want something underneath your logo that identifies you and is simpler to read. This could be your website, or, if you don't have a website, your Facebook page is a great alternative. The bottom line is, as long as your audience can easily read who you are. And having info about your social media pages is a great idea anyway. By doing this, your crowd will know who you are, and you won't need to change the font or typeface you're using on your logo. These are just a few suggestions based on my experience. I'm here to follow your instructions though. You're the boss, and as far as I'm concerned, whatever you want is fine with me. As I mentioned though, it is a very good idea to give yourselves a plug and lead your audience to your social media pages. If you don't want to spoil the look of your backdrop, Ampscrim showing your social pages is often a great alternative. This way you can keep the look and feel of your backdrop and still get some Facebook love at the same time. Guitar amps, in my opinion, are your own personal billboards. They're ideal to promote whatever you want. And the fabric I use on amp scrims won't adversely affect the sound from your amps either. I'd like to discuss your artwork and graphic file formats for getting your backdrop made, by me or anyone else. Graphic files come in two main flavours. These are raster images and vector images. Raster files, or rasters, are files like photographs, and these are made up of thousands of small coloured dots called pixels. You probably already know this. And when used at the correct size or resolution, the pixels are too small to see. One caveat here, if you enlarge raster images too far, these pixels grow with the image until they become visible. The images start to become blurry and they get that sawtoothed effect on the edges. The clarity and quality starts to get lost. I often compare this effect to too little Vegemite on too much toast. You can still see it, but the flavour gets lost. Vectors on the other hand are made up of lines and polygons, stuff that can be calculated like on a house plan. What this means is they are completely unaffected by changes in size. They scale without loss. Both raster and vector files are fine for use with a backdrop. Raster images need to be of a high enough resolution or size so individual pixels don't become visible at backdrop sizes. Vectors, as we spoke about, will scale to any size, up or down, without any loss of clarity. Your artwork can be a combination of both these file types, and they often are. Now if you don't have artwork, this is no problem. I can help you with your design, using your ideas, and I have a graphics designer I can call on if you need something really fancy. Well you've made it. That's it. Now you know what you need to do to get your backdrop right the first time. That's why I created this video. And with the right backdrop, you can connect better with your crowd, you can look more professional, and you will be taken more seriously as a band. If you do want to connect more closely with your crowd, look more professional, and have your band and your performance taken more seriously, here's how you can. Just send me a text. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, usually within 24 hours or the next working day. My number is 0404. 845-990 and as a special bonus to anyone who watches this video 
I'll throw in a free kick drum cover with any backdrop I create for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've found a few clues in there which will help you get your backdrop right the first time. I look forward to hearing from you soon. This is Steve the Banner Guy of B2BJV.com. You have a great day.